All right, well, I invite you to turn your Bibles to uh, Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. And uh, if you need a Bible, just let Jenny know. You have your Bible? Okay. So Revelation chapter number 6. And uh, in chapter number 4, uh, John found himself in the throne room of God. And as he looked in the throne room of God, he uh, saw the 24 elders. And who are the 24 elders, we believe? The saints. The, new the Old saints. Testament. The Old Testament saints and the New Testament saints are around the throne. Then you had the four beasts. And uh, the word beast means what? Creature. Creature. And so comparing Scripture with Scripture in the Old Testament, we believe this is the seraphim that are in the presence of God. And then on the right hand of God the Father is our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, he steps out at just the right time. He takes a scroll in his hand. And this scroll tells what God's plan is for this earth. <laughs> and so no one was worthy to take this scroll except one. That's the Lamb of God. That is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David. And that is Jesus Christ. And so everybody just breaks into praise. You know, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom, strength and honor and glory and blessing. And we see a picture of a time when everything that's alive, no matter where it is, is going to be praising our Lord. And then in verse number one of chapter six, this is where we were at last week. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, come and see. So here it is. We went back to the Daniel the prophet where uh, the prophet was told to seal it up. Seal it up. Don't reveal everything. And now we have Jesus Christ revealing what's behind these seals. And we looked last time at a few scriptures. Looked at Daniel 9 and Daniel chapter 11. And we noticed there's this... Uh, this character that the Bible keeps talking about, this prince who's going to come, this antichrist who is going to come. And uh, we believe this is devil's, the devil's uh, a puppet. And uh, although there are many antichrists, we learned in 1 John 2.18, there is that antichrist. So there are many people, believe it or not, who want to dominate this world. <laughs> Can you imagine that? And there are going to be many people who try whether it's uh, the Caesars of Rome or whether it's uh, Hitler, whether it's Napoleon. There are a lot of people who are going to try. Uh, Genghis Khan. I mean, there are many antichrists, people who want to set themselves up against God and control this world instead of God controlling this world. But there's finally going to be one who's going to be successful. And we saw him as the first seal was opened, verse number two, and I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So here he is. All the world leaders that are past are all found in one man who is able to do what all of them have failed to do, and that is to control the world. But of course, anybody who controls the world is still under who? God. And so... You know, God will say when he comes on the scene, and God will then eventually shut him down. And that's what Revelation is all about. Shutting down evil and lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at a few more passages that talk about this man. 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Paul says here, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Don't be troubled, he says. Jesus' is coming is soon. Don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. And Jesus comes for all of us in one of two ways. What's the way most of us will meet Jesus? Through what? Death. Through death. That's right. We'll meet Jesus. The other way is when he comes in the clouds to receive his church. That's another way that people will meet Christ. Verse 3. 
Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that the man of sin shall be revealed, the son of perdition. There he is, this rider on the white horse, the man of sin, the son of perdition. Uh, man of sin, you see our, my note here in my Schofield Reference Bible, says the lawless one. And so the lawless one is going to be revealed. The son of perdition. In other words, the one who is going to be judged by God. He is going to be revealed. What is he going to do? Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped. So that as God sitteth in the temple of God, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And so we, we read about that. But uh, here he is. He's going to go to the temple, and he's going to say pretty much, I am God. You know, this is a pretty blasphemous man. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. There's a lot here. This is not our main passage. But what we see here is the Holy Spirit is here holding things back. Holding things back. And when the church is taken out of this world one day, in what's popularly called the rapture, then the Holy Spirit stops holding back. And this man of sin, this son of perdition, is going to just have free reign on this earth. And you know what? The worst thing you can do to a person is let them get away with whatever they want to get away with. And that's what humanity is going to do. Finally, you know, pride will be the rule of the day. <laughs> Finally, people will just do whatever they want to do. There's no restraints. And when God takes off the brakes, guess where humanity is headed? to judgment and destruction. You follow the son of judgment, the son of perdition, then guess where you're going to end up? In judgment. That's exactly what's going to happen. It says here, it says verse 8, And then shall that wicked, that's the wicked one, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And we're going to talk about that in Revelation later. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure and unrighteousness. And there's a lot in those verses there. But it simply says, if in this day of grace you reject the Lord Jesus Christ and the salvation he offers, then guess what? There's coming a time when you'll be given over, that's a Bible term, to a delusion. And you're going to think you're all that. And take heed, if you think you stand, lest you do what? Fall. And it's going to be a great fall one day. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 13 through 15 describes this man. It says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. Now listen to this. When this guy comes on the scene, this beast, this antichrist, this wicked one, this prince, this son of perdition, He's not going to be wearing a 666 tattoo on his forehead, okay? He's not going to be obvious. In other words, he's not going to have pointy ears and a pointy tail. He's not going to be wearing horns, and he probably won't have that goatee you know, that you always see the devil wearing, right? It says here, what do false apostles, deceitful workers do? They transform transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. 
In other words, when a false teacher comes, he says, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I love Jesus just like you. you know? Well, in the same way, verse 14 says, and no marvel, don't be surprised, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So here he is, this man of perdition, this wicked one who's going to rise up. The church is gone. The Holy Spirit is no longer restraining. And he comes on the scene. You know, they talk about that, you know, knight on a white horse coming and whisking you away. You know, all those fairy tales about these girls and how they ought to, they're, they're prince in shining armor coming to whisk them away. Well, you know, the world will have rejected Christ at this point. But everyone's looking for a savior. And this guy's going to come on the scene and they think he is it. He is our savior. He is sent to us. You know, the Jewish people who do not believe in Christ, they're still waiting for their Messiah. They don't think their Messiah has come. And this guy on the white horse, he is their Messiah. He is the one they've been waiting for. But he's a false Messiah. He's a false Christ. We'll be referencing Jesus' uh, Olivet Discourse. Look at Matthew 24. Matthew 24. You see, the Bible is a unity. The book of Revelation isn't just out there by itself. It, 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 uh, it corresponds with the rest of Scripture. So Matthew 24, verses 3 through 5 says, And as Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Now listen to the question here. It says, and, and what sign shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? You want to know what things are going to be like before Jesus comes in glory? Go to Matthew 24. And we're going to see the same things in Matthew 24 that we see in Revelation chapter 6. So verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now the word Christ is the Greek translation of what Old Testament concept or word? Messiah. I am the Messiah. I am your Savior. <laughs> you see a lot of saviors this year's election in Virginia. They're going to say, I'm the answer. I'm the only one can do it. I'm your guy. I will do this. I promise you the world and give you absolutely nothing. Well, this guy right here, it said in Thessalonians, he's able to work signs and wonders. And so, wow, he can mimic. Christ, he can declare himself to be the Messiah, but he's no Messiah, and his judgment is certain. Any comments or questions about this man of sin, this son of perdition? Any thoughts? All right, well, let's keep moving on then. Let's go back to Revelation 6, verse 2. It says here, And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. This guy's a world leader. He's humanity's choice because he's Satan's choice to rule the world. You know, we think about Saul, the first king of unified Israel. And God gave them Saul because he was everything the people wanted, he was head and shoulders. Above everybody else. He was a tall man. He was a strong man. He was a handsome man. He looked like a natural leader. But in the end we realize what was in Saul's heart. <laughs> he was in it for himself and not for the glory of God. But thankfully after Saul came who? David. David a man after God's own heart. And so we see here kind of a Saul type character here. 
He is everything you would want in a world leader. And so it says here, a crown was given unto him. You know what? He, most people in this world weren't forced to submit to this world leader. They gave him the crown. They gave him their liberties. They gave him their freedoms. Willingly. Because what's he promising? Peace. Peace, peace, the prophet says, when there is no peace. Plenty of bread for everyone. We will solve the world climate crisis. <laughs> oh, we will solve all of these things. I have the answers. <laughs> and a hungry world without Christ says, yes, yes. And they cheer him and they cheer him. And he goes forth conquering and to conquer, taking over the world. Okay. So what happens when you follow a false Messiah? That's what we deal with in this chapter. Verses 3 and 4. When he'd opened the second seal. So the first seal's open. We've read chapter 1 of what's going to happen. This world leader is going to come on the scene and deceive people. Okay. When he'd opened the second seal. This is chapter 2. And when I say that of the scroll. I heard the second beast or, or creature say... Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Wow. We had the rider on the white horse. Now we have the rider on the red horse. Who does he represent? War. That's right. That's like the red planet is the planet of war, Mars, the god of war. Look at Matthew 24 again. I want you to see this corresponds right with what Jesus says in his Olivet Discourse. You keep your finger at Matthew 24 because I'm going to be referencing here. Matthew 24, verses 6 and 7. It says, And ye shall hear. This is after one of the false Christ comes on the scene. Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So we see here Jesus echoing what's going to happen. Wars. Rumors of wars. But I thought this guy was going to bring peace. <laughs> Who is Satan? He is a liar and the father of it. You follow me, everything be all right. No, no, no. Any man apart from Christ who promises you everything is going to be great and wonderful, he is a liar. Because apart from Christ, everything falls apart. So here he comes, the red horse now. War all over the earth. What follows the war? Well, verses 5 and 6, chapter 6 of Revelation. When he'd opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. So here's chapter 3 of the scroll, right? And I beheld. And lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. <laughs> What's going on here? Famine. What? Famine. Famine? Poverty? So here he is, this false messiah. Peace, prosperity. Now there's famine. Now there's poverty. We see a measure of wheat for a penny. A measure is a quart. A quart of wheat. A penny is a day's wages. Imagine that. You work a whole day and you go to Walmart and you get your bag of cornmeal. Imagine that. You're talking about Inflation? Out of control? 
Yeah, that's what's going to happen here. But it says, see that thou hurt not the oil and the wine. You know, one of the issues that a lot of progressives talk about today is income inequality. Income inequality. And what that means is the, the wealthy are getting more wealthy and the poor are getting poorer and the middle class is being squeezed out. And usually the people who talk about wealth inequality are the ones who, if they implement their policies, are going to cause even worse wealth inequality. Okay, and that's the same way with this Antichrist here. But we see here, see that thou hurt not the oil and the wine. The masses of people are working a whole day so they can have cornbread. And the next day, so they can buy a few beans. And the next day, so they can buy a sack of potatoes. But guess what the people at the top are doing? <laughs> In spite of widespread poverty, the Antichrist, the man of sin, and all of his wealthy friends, at least at the first part of this period of time, are still living in luxury. Oh, it's awful. You have to work a whole day to get a, a bag of cornmeal. But hey, don't touch my oil. Don't touch my wine. <laughs> don't take away my Learjet. All these hypocrites. I'm going to give you wealth. I'm going to make you rich. They just make you poor. And guess who gets rich? The people at the top. Kind of like that movie we watched based on that book, Animal Farm. Remember that? All the pigs said, we're going to make this better than when men ruled. And then uh, <laughs> what happened? The pigs started getting corrupt and becoming just like the men. And uh, some are more equal than others, right? Okay. All right, we won't go down that rabbit hole. Okay. So we see here the first seal is the false messiah. The second seal is war. The third seal is poverty and famine. And because of war, and because of the poverty and famine, let's see what the result is. It all makes sense. Verse number 7 and 8. Verses 7 and 8. And when he had opened the fourth seal, chapter 4, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked. And behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. To kill with sword. And with hunger. And with death. And with the beast of the earth. Wow. What is this fourth horse and rider represent on this pale horse death. death you have war you have widespread famine and poverty what's the natural result death the word Hades here the word hell here is the word uh, Hades which means the abode of the dead it says power was given under this fourth horse and rider which is representative, over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beasts of the earth. You know, people got all excited about the pandemic. But we have here one-fourth of the earth dead. Dead. Look at Ezekiel 14. Ezekiel 14. Ezekiel 14, verses 21 through 23. It says, For thus saith the Lord God, How much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword, the famine, the noisome beast, and the pestilence, to cut off from it man and beast, Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings. And ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I brought upon Jerusalem. 
even concerning all that I have brought upon it. And they shall comfort you when ye see their ways and their doings. And ye shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord God. I think we see a parallel passage here with what's going on in Revelation. In other words, you have the sword, you have hunger, you have death, you have pestilence. And guess what? There's some people that start reading those Bibles that were left behind. And there's some people, and this is the point of the tribulation. The point of this period of time is to help people see we're not evolving. We're going the other direction. And when we reject God and his Messiah, we go there very quickly. And so here we have war, famine, poverty, and death. And the masses of people are going to just say, Oh, great leader, we trust you. Oh, great leader, we trust you. And they go further and further and further down under God's judgment. But there's a remnant. And this remnant says, you know what? The whole world is wrong. And this book, the Bible, is right. And they start being converted during this time of trouble. And as they start being converted, there's worldwide revival. No, that's not what happens. This leader sees these Christians as a threat to his authority. And guess what he does? This guy has the audacity to do what people are doing today. You know, I listened to a little daily news brief put out by a podcast called Cross Politic. I like the little daily news brief. And uh, I guess there was something where uh, there was uh, a person who had a gender change surgery. And the girl cut off her female characteristics. And then she killed herself. And someone said, well, you might think that she might have had regrets. You might think maybe the male hormones pulsing through her body may have caused her to go crazy and kill herself. But guess who they blame for her suicide? They blame the Christians. Well, if you weren't preaching against this, and if you weren't so negative on this, they wouldn't be depressed. They would be happy. Everything would be all right. No, no, it's all wrong. It's the devil's lies. When we go against God and his order and his Messiah, there's always judgment. There's always doom. But guess who's going to be blamed? The Christians. Oh, if you just get in tune with our world leader, Christians, then everything would be all right. You're just knocking the, 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 uh, the, the karma, man. Because it's going to be a mystical sort of a time. It's just not going to be based on the Bible. So what happens to the Christians during this time who start to get saved? They're put to death. And so verses 9 through 11, and we won't be able to get into this, but I will read this. When he'd opened the fifth seal, and I wish it said this, the world realized it had believed a lie and turned to its creator and his true Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. But that's not what it says here. They're doubling down. And when he had opened the fifth seal, chapter 5, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should yet rest, yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. What do we see here? Great martyrdom. 
great martyrdom. Those who are coming to their senses and are coming back to God are going to be blamed and are going to be killed. And uh, I think my time is almost up. But let's look at Matthew 24 once again. Matthew 24. And then we'll close out. Matthew 24. Jesus' words. It says here in verses, uh, verse 8, All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And Lord willing, next week we'll pick back up here in Revelation chapter 6.